yeah, back in my college a... DJ days. <laughs> it's a good did you know. Very astronautical. That's got to be in some teacher trivia later this year, maybe. That's right. Monty, does best sound better? Yeah, it sounds great. Good. We aim to please, you know. <laughs> what was your DJ name? Uh, Bill. <laughs> It was college radio. Nobody cared what your name was. It's just the guy putting this, putting the records on. Nobody cared. Um, do you think we can start now, or should we uh, keep people an, a minute? I don't know. We probably have like people on by now. I don't. Um, How are we doing, CJ? We have about 180 watching. Let's go. All right. Let's get started. Well. Hi everyone watching on YouTube. Um, happy first day of school and welcome back virtually. Um, my name is Casper Hoffman. I'm the student council president. I'm gonna turn it over to the other vice presidents so that they can introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Anna Galachi. I am a student council vice president and I am the leader of community outreach. So I deal with like, I don't know, community outreach, all that good stuff, talking with clubs, talking with other students who want to start things. Um, my name is Hallie Bender. I'm the vice president of assemblies. So I'm dealing with assemblies every week and we'll be reaching out to people who are going to lead assemblies and everything. And really happy to be here with you all. Hi, I'm Ruby. Um, I am the vice president of events. So all of those events that student council leads, coffee house, the snow coming, all that good stuff. I'm in charge of that. So if you ever want to reach out about that. Yeah, so feel free to reach out to all four of us with whatever you want, really. We're here to help you all out and make sure that your voices are, are heard. So don't be scared to email us, text us. You know, it, 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 it all works. Um, before we give a couple of shout outs, I just wanted to remind everyone that there is a Parents of Students of Color virtual welcome back meet and greet this Sunday at 1 p.m. Um, parents should have received an invitation and a link for this on Thursday, but just check the emails for that. I think Hallie is gonna give an announcement about the fall play meeting. Um, so the fall play meeting is at 7 p.m. on Monday night. Everyone is welcome. It's just an interest meeting, so there's no commitment there. Look for the information in Mr. Mack's weekly update. Now we wanted to just give a shout out to our new faculty. So first we wanted to welcome David Tillon, who will be teaching Latin and Spanish. And then um, Liz Carlson Guerin is gonna be the new drama teacher. We have Carl Piranha, who's teaching math. Um, Andrea Pian is our new college counselor. And Mr. Fogel will be becoming a full-time upper school history teacher. And we have a new director of equity and multicultural education, Erica Snowden. So if you guys see these people on campus or virtually, make sure to give them a warm welcome to our school. We're so happy to have them here. Yeah. Um, just a couple more shout outs. Um, we wanted to shout out everyone who was involved in creating the leadership training program and to everyone who attended it. It was really nice to see you all there. Another shout out. This one's for Carolyn Walsh who finished second in the Philadelphia UAC Youth Ready Summer Program Project in which she worked with a nonprofit organization called Philly Tree People Who Plant and Maintain Trees in Urban Environments. And we wanted to congratulate Miss Novo, who became a proud grandmother this summer. Shout out to little Lily Novo Chihuahua as well. And in other exciting news, Mr. Fisher, Misty, and Mr. Mack all have new canine companions. Uh, also, shout out to Miss Schumacher, whose new play *Lounge* is premiering as a reading next Thursday as part of the as part of the Philadelphia Women's Theater Festival. 
So with all these shout outs, we just wanted to wish everyone a very happy start of the school year. We're so happy that you're all back. Good to see you all. We can't wait to see you all on Zoom yeah, and then hopefully campus soon. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Mack now. He has some words to say. Thank you, student council leaders. Really nice to be with everyone this Friday morning, first day of school. Um, big welcome to all of our new students, especially. I hope you're managing and uh, finding your classes okay and starting to feel connected. Really, we have a great new group of, of new students in ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So um, look for some new faces in your classes, those returning students as well, and, and, uh, and put yourself out to them. Make sure you introduce yourself. Uh, I wanted to read. Um, the notice that went out last night to your parents, one of the things that we've heard in the past is that students um, get a little frustrated when their parents receive um, notices and they don't have access to them or, or hear about them. So this, this went out from Mr. Sellers last night. I just wanna read it to you. Uh, Dear friends, I'm contacting you tonight to let you know that we are closing our City Avenue campus to students tomorrow, September 11th. We learned this evening that an upper school student who was on the City Avenue campus this week tested positive for COVID-19. The student who is not symptomatic was tested for family reasons and notified the school of the situation immediately. If we have not reached out to you directly, it means that we do not believe your child was exposed. Although it is possible that county health department contact tracers will uncover contact that occurred outside of school that we are not aware of. As we have communicated, it has been our plan to work with county health officials to establish contact tracing and to determine who in the community should be quarantined. Because we learned this news this evening, we're not able to reach them for guidance. So out of an abundance of caution, we are closing City Avenue campus to students tomorrow. COVID-19 testing scheduled for lower and middle school students and employees tomorrow and Saturday will proceed as scheduled. Thank you in advance for your patience and your care for our community members. We will communicate before September 14 with an update. Thank you. I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Beth. Good morning, everyone. I'm hoping you can hear me. If a student council could just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Thank you so very much. I just wanted to, before I um, talk a little bit about what's on my heart and we do a little bit of a presentation for you, I just want to recognize that today is 9-11. It's the 19th anniversary of when the planes uh, struck the towers and their um, planes were struck the Pentagon and when a plane um, landed in a field in Pennsylvania. And I would just like us to take just a moment of silence. There are some families who are still grieving, families who have, have lost, who lost loved ones. And uh, I just wouldn't want this school day to go by without us at least pausing and holding families in the light. I hope you'll join me in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Uh, CJ, if you wouldn't mind, if you would share the, uh, the PowerPoint, be wonderful. Thank you. So during orientation, I said, hashtag Black Mainline Speaks, and I told you it was started to give a voice to silenced students and to advocate for change within their community. I said, hashtag Me Too Monco, which was started to stop schools from sweeping cases under the rug and rather take progressive action. Hashtag LGBTQ on the main line started to give a platform to LGBTQ plus students whose voices have been silenced or ignored for decades. Also, I said that we learned about students' experiences around ableism which is discrimination in favor of able-bodied people and xenophobia, dislike or of or prejudice against people from other countries. I stated emphatically during orientation that we are committed to change and we affirm that our goal is to create a community where bias is not acceptable. When speaking with students who went through the leadership training and there were over 100 students who did that, I'm so appreciative. I said, when we consider that we have read and heard, hashtag Black Mainline Speaks, hashtag Me Too Montco, hashtag LGBTQ on the main line, 
ableism and xenophobia at, at Friends Central. The reality is that no matter what programming changes and punishments we put in place, it's community members like you who will affect change. I asked them, what will you do as a trained leader to affect change? And I asked them to talk about ways in which they would be upstanders as leaders beginning today that would be different from the ways in which they were leaders before. In the spring of last year, students called on us, Mr. Mack, Mr. Kennedy, and me to take a greater stand. And we were asked to develop a presentation for all students in the upper school about the citizenship statement and standards of behavior as outlined in our handbooks. We wanna be clear, we will not tolerate any type of hate speech at Friends Central School. And this is that presentation we were asked to give. Hello everyone, it's Mr. Kennedy from the uh, upper school office annex, right down the hall from Ms. Beth and Mr. Mack. And um, all of the things we're about to read to you are from the student and family handbook, which can be found on Veracross. I recognize that for those of you who've been with us for a while, a lot of this is gonna be review, but for new students, this is brand new information. Uh, and also we have a number of new entries in the handbook, which are significant, which we will highlight as we go through. So we are gonna start off with the diversity and inclusivity statement. From the founding of the Society of Friends in the mid 17th century, Quakers have recognized the spiritual quality of all persons. This basic tenet of Quakerism stems from the belief that there is the divine spark in everyone. This philosophy has guided Friends Central School's commitment to the ideal of respecting all persons. Friends Central School is committed to building and maintaining an inclusive and diverse community. All constituencies, faculty, staff, students, administrators, parents, trustees, and alumni, alumnae are responsible for an awareness of and the ongoing dialogue around equity issues of race and ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, privilege, religion, physical ability, and family structure. Our commitment is based on Quaker testimony and practice in which we honor each perspective and life experience. Our community as a whole benefits when we listen and involve a broader range of voices. Hey everyone. It's Mr. Mack here. I'm going to read the honor statement. Um, this is near and dear to my heart. It was established in 2011, almost 10 years ago, um, by a group of students, a student-led committee. So uh, this was something that was student-initiated, initiated a way of writing down what matters to students on campus. So I'm going to read it. It was revised last year um, beautifully by the members of the Honor Code Committee. So we're really appreciative of that. As a member of the Friends Central community founded on Quaker principles, I will act with integrity and treat others and our shared environment with respect. Stewardship. Am I caring for our community's shared spaces and resources or do my actions degrade them? Peace. Am I helping to foster a safe environment for authentic and diverse expression? Do my actions make room for needed yet difficult interactions? Integrity. Is my work reflecting my own learning or have I taken ideas from another person without crediting them? Am I respecting the property of others? Am I respecting myself? Community. Am I collaborating in the spirit of inclusivity to strengthen our community? Or am I excluding others and detracting from our shared mission? Equity, equality. Am I treating others the way I wish to be treated? Am I treating others the way they wish to be treated? Am I aware of the diversity of needs in our community? Do I support and amplify needs that are not properly acknowledged, including my own? Simplicity. Am I fully in this moment or am I letting things and tasks distract me from what and who are present in this moment? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mack. I'm gonna talk about the citizenship statement and it's important for students to know that it's our expectation that these statements, uh, the honor statement, citizenship statement and the other statements we're reading today are things we hope will guide your actions while you're a student at Friends Central School, both on and off campus. So this is the citizenship statement. Friends Central students are expected to uphold the highest standard of conduct in academic, athletic, and extracurricular settings, or in the broader community where they are known and highly regarded. 
Our classrooms seek to foster respectful thought, study, and discussion, all of which are critical to a vibrant educational environment. We work to ensure every member of the school community has an equal opportunity to learn and develop to their potential. Unreserved respect for the rights and feelings of others is essential to the life of the school and requires the support of both student and family. To provide an environment of mutual respect, every member of the community, which includes all students, faculty, and staff, and parents, must recognize certain guidelines for appropriate behavior. Inappropriate and unacceptable behavior includes bullying, unwelcome physical contact or verbal remarks, derogatory or discriminatory statements based on race, ethnicity, physical ability, gender expression or identity, sexual orientation, religion, economic status, or physical appearance. Principals, teachers, advisors, and administrators are available to support anyone who feels victimized. When students fail to uphold the citizenship standards of our community, the principal is in consultation with the head of school will be the arbiters of fair consequences, which may include suspension or expulsion. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. I'm going to review behavior and discipline, and I'm not going to read all of the what the handbook has, but, but parts of it. Behavior. We expect students to be guided by our honor and citizenship statements, the ones that we just covered, and to conduct themselves in ways that reflect and uphold the Quaker values of the school. We ex expect this of them when they're on campus and also when they are representing the school in off-campus settings and activities. Students will face disciplinary action for unacceptable behavior. Our overall expectations for behavior and citizenship are as follows. Demonstrate respect for all community members and visitors through words and actions. Create and maintain an environment where all members can learn and are affirmed. Care for our buildings and beautiful campus. Uphold and demonstrate the school's mission and values. Resolve and move, move past conflicts peacefully. I'm gonna pause here to say that unfortunately, we've already had a very disappointing incident, um, a use of language which amounted to sexual harassment in a public online platform on one of our orientation days. This has had a significant impact on those who witnessed it and tells us that we have a lot of work to do in that area. And you'll hear more about our revised statements on sexual assault and harassment a little bit later. But I just wanted to point that out. Discipline. The next slide, um, CJ, if you could. Thanks. Discipline at Friends Central School is considered a part of the educational process and is normally an internal matter. However, conduct infractions by FCS students may have consequences beyond the confines of school. Colleges have become increasingly concerned about student behavior on their campuses, and most colleges now ask applicants about their high school disciplinary records. When a student is or has been separated from FCS for any reason, including suspension, colleges at which the student has active applications for admission or at which the student is holding an offer of admission will also be notified. As their advocates, college counselors will work closely with students in reporting disciplinary matters to colleges. Thank you. Thank you. Hate speech and signs. Hate speech is language that attacks or dehumanizes others on the basis of race, ethnicity, religion, gender, sexuality, physical appearance, socioeconomic status, dis or ability, nationality, or citizenship status. A hate symbol is one that represents a group or action of hate. Powerful hate symbols often have a historical context, a history of use to produce fear and discrimination against a particular group based on their race, gender, religion, ability, sexual orientation, etc. Using hate language and our symbols, it's not acceptable at Friends Central and is not in accordance with our school values of stewardship, peace, integrity, equality, community, and simplicity. Such words and actions evoke a long history of violence and dehumanization and cannot be used in jest when quoting others, in songs, 
or even in quote unquote friendly or quote unquote joking context. This rule applies to all Friends Central students, families, and employees. It also applies in electronic contexts. That is to say texts, emails, and social media posts, as well as in writing or speech at any time. Any student using hateful language or symbols will be subjected to this discipline. All inappropriate and offensive hate language and symbols will be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis for consequences. Bill? Thank you, Ms. Beth. Uh, I did want to remind folks that these, uh, the section that Ms. Beth just read and the two that I'm about to read are new to the handbook. And again, the handbook, the student and family handbook can be found uh, through a link on your Veracross homepage. I'm going to talk about consent, which uh, those of you who've been with us before have heard Mr. V talk about very powerfully, and I'm hoping you all have that chance this year as well. Consent is an agreement to allow something to happen. It is required whenever we interact with another person's body, property, or reputation. Consent may be communicated verbally or non-verbally, although verbal consent is always better. Consent is specific to a certain action or moment and must be reestablished often. Consent may be withdrawn at any time for any reason. Any student who experiences any breach of consent, sexual or non-consexual, has the right and the responsibility to speak up and be heard. A student may seek out help and support from any trusted adult on campus, although official complaints about consent violations should be made to the upper school office, grade dean, school nurse, or a school counselor. Consequences for breaching consent may include restorative education and counseling, suspension, and permanent separation from the community for egregious incidents or multiple offenses. Next slide, please, CJ. And I appreciate you, uh, you, you following along here. I recognize that we are reading at you, uh, but this is uh, important material and it's necessary. Um, and the next slide, sexual harassment and sexual assault. Sexual harassment is, quote, unwelcome or unwanted physical, verbal, or visual behavior of a sexual nature that interferes with a student's educational opportunities, unquote. Sexual assault is, quote, intentional sexual contact using force, threat, or abuse of power or authority, or when the victim does not or cannot consent, unquote. Any student who experiences sexual harassment or sexual assault has the right and the responsibility to speak up and be heard. A student may seek out help and support from any trusted adult on campus, although official complaints about consent violations, harassment, or assault should be made to the upper school office, grade dean, school nurse, or a school counselor. Sexual harassment and assault will not be tolerated on or off campus. Consequences for sexual harassment and assault can include restorative education and counseling, suspension, and permanent separation from the community for egregious incidents or multiple offenses. Also, a report to law enforcement may be included with sexual assault or harassment. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Mack. Um, a number of you have, have said or have asked and said, yep, all these rules are great, but, but what's the school doing? And I wanna just give you a little bit of an update. Uh, teachers have been engaged in a professional development uh, and done some reading on their own as well. Uh, in addition, we have some, uh, a to-do list of, so to speak. We've done substantive uh, DEI programming, um, and we added that to the orientation. Uh, you experienced that uh, during this week. We also um, did some student leadership training, and our goal is to begin the process of changing school culture, and we believe that that begins with our school leaders and helping students to become upstanders rather than bystanders. We gave them some real training or the skills we want them to have to create safe spaces for all and to really make anti-bias behavior and language a priority. In addition, there's gonna be a principal course that I will be teaching. It's a required course for 10th graders. You're going to experience it by homeroom and each homeroom will be attending the programming for two weeks over lunch. 
We'll start the process in October. We'll take one homeroom at a time to meet with me. Modules will include invisibility, privilege, gender, xenophobia, sexual orientation, consent, race, ethnicity, ageism, signs, symbols, and language, religion, socioeconomic status, ability, politics, causes, and movements, mental emotion and emotional health, family composition, and then our own responsibility. I look forward to meeting all of the 10th graders over lunch blocks in the, um, in the upcoming school year. We've also made it a priority to have year long programming. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we're gonna bring some programmings to a special block and assembly. We're gonna do that work that I promised to do, the Council on Equity, where one leader from the clubs related to the big eight identifiers will be invited to meet with me and perhaps others as a Council on Equity. Our goal will be to create a group that works together to help us get a better sense of collective experiences. With regular reporting to the head of school and the development of action steps, we can create a more inclusive anti-bias school. We're gonna include programming and education on consent, sexual harassment and assault. We're going to be developing with Erica Snowden a bias reporting protocol. And we're working hard with um, members of the honor statement or honor uh, code club to begin a formation of an honor council. We begin to perhaps uh, help in the um, thinking about when, when there are behavioral infractions on campus. I, I'm really excited about all of these changes that we're thinking about and all the programming that we'll be doing and will be ongoing, but here's the, the real conclusion. And that is we need your participation to make Friends Central an anti-biased community. We need you to help us affect change. And we need you to make this goal a priority. And we're counting on you to do that. And I thank you so much for your attention. I know this was a lot of speaking at you I, I know that students, particularly our, our seniors, um, are appreciating that we're taking the time to set the stage because this is what they asked us to do. Uh, thank you so much. I just want to put it back in the hands of student council at this point. Thank you, Ms. Beth. Um, thanks to everyone on YouTube who watched this. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of your first day of school. Um, I think it's block three next after the break. Um, yeah, and have a great weekend and your first day of school.